Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English, an instructional support program for intermediate level learners of all ages and from all language backgrounds improving their English. I'm your host, John Letts, and this is segment two of episode 38. Our thematic unit is animals, and today we feature pets. Now, the use of the word pet in the previous video clip could cause confusion as when the narrator said to be sure to pet your pet. That's because the word pet can be to different parts of speech. As mentioned earlier, a pet is an animal that has an emotional and often physical connection with the person. Used this way, the word pet is a noun, and nouns name people, places, things, ideas, and concepts. The word pet is also a verb, a word that communicates action. Stroking the fur of a tame animal is petting. So to pet your special furry friend means to stroke its coat. When you do that, you're petting your pet. Now in recent episodes, we've touched on some basic English phonics skills, taking advantage of some animal names that feature short vowel sounds. Our first venture was with the word cat a word with many rhyming words using the same short vowel sound and ending in the T sound. Well, we then used the word can to further practice the short A sound. In both cases, we found a long list of rhyming words. These word groups are called word families, and exploring word families is a good way to grow your vocabulary. We also found a word family rhyming with dog so by now, you've practiced the short A and the short O sound. Now let's use another vowel today. The word pet has the short E sound, and we can use the same method as before to find members of the word family. As before, we begin at the start of the alphabet. Our first consonant is the letter B, which gives us the rhyming word bet. Bet means to wager. People bet on a horse race, for example, and even dog races. In the word bet, the middle letter E is pronounced the same as the E in pet, the E sound. Now, we have to go all the way to G to find the next word in this family. It's the word get, as in to obtain something. Get also means to understand, as in I get the joke. When we reach the letter J, we have another rhyming word, jet, a type of airplane. The letter L gives us let, meaning to allow, as in, my parents let me borrow the car. And um, then there is met, the past tense of meet, and net, an object used to catch fish, among other things. And then set, putting something in place, as in, I set the fishing gear in the boat. Tet, an important holiday in Vietnam, the word vet can be short for veterinarian, an animal doctor, and someone whom you'll bring your pet to, and veteran, someone who has served the country in the armed forces. The letter W gives us wet, having moisture, and Y gives us the word yet, a word that can take the place of but and however as a conjunction and can also mean already, as in the dreaded vacation question, are we there yet? Simple words like pet tempt me to delve slightly into the, word of phon the world of phonics. So you can begin to pronounce some English words when reading. By no means is this a complete phonics instruction, which is far beyond the scope of this program. It's more a taste of phonics that may give you some knowledge to expand to more difficult reading tasks. We'll probably do one more of these. These word families will be listed on my website, letscreate.org. I've also included a link to starfall.com, a website well suited for learning the phonics, the basics of phonics in English. If you look up the words in that word family list, you'll have the start of your own English vocabulary list. These are words you've looked up in the dictionary. The idea is to help you pronounce English words when you're reading. Now, pronouncing words is an important skill, but knowing their meaning is the real goal. Now let's take a look at some of the words we're using in this unit. Animals. 
That's our theme. Think of them as living things that move. Wild, not tamed by people, living by their natural instincts. Tamed, the opposite, an animal's behavior influenced by humans. Domesticated, it's kind of like tamed, often involving using a service. Pet, an animal with a close relationship with people. And we'll add feral, a series of uh, species, I mean, that's normally domesticated, living as if it were wild. And we'll add stray to the list, a pet that has, no longer has a home. And then there's the animals that we have seen so far, horse, cat, and dog. And we'll add to this list as we go further into the unit. I suggest dedicating a few pages to your notebook to vocabulary so that's a place you can go look up words without going to the dictionary. When it comes to the kinds of animals we've referred to, it's important to realize that these groups are not absolute. Some of them overlap. A fish could be kept as a pet, but it's unlikely to show much affection. Most fish are wild. An unadapted stray cat can turn feral. A um, service animal may be part of the family and treated as a pet. You see how all that works. So in segment three, we'll see a video clip about a program in Southern Oregon that trains dogs to help people who can't hear. This ends segment two. We'll be back with segment three after this. What's a horse doing on ramping up your English? We're galloping toward a new unit, animals. So we're in the country meeting some horses. Horses are just one of the many animals that will help viewers ramp up their English. So funny. Our Mr. Cowboy, you loving that? Horses, boy, I'm, I'm getting the flies. You see, horses have to deal with flies. Coming soon to RVTV Voices, a new unit on ramping up your English, an educational support program for intermediate level English learners from all language backgrounds. So how can horses help you improve your English? Watch Ramping Up Your English to find out on channels 15 and 115 in Ashland and channel 182 on Charter Cable in Southern Oregon.